This is Bob Capetta from the University of Illinois at Chicago, and this lesson is on geometric series. So what exactly is a geometric series? Something like this. The sum is k goes from 0 to infinity of r to the k. So if k starts at 0, r to the 0 is of course 1, r to the first is r, r to the second, r to the third, r to the fourth. We want to add all these up to infinity. This is a series. r to the k itself would be a sequence. And of course, a series converges if the partial sums converge. If the limit of the sequence of partial sums converges, then the series converges. So this is what we're going to look at. Now, what exactly is the partial sum? s sub n is the sum of the first n terms. So if I go from 1 plus r to the first plus r to the second plus r to the third plus r to the fourth up to r to the n, that is the sum of the first n terms. So s sub n is a sequence. If that sequence converges, the series that defines s sub n converges. So we need to look to see if indeed that's the case. So is there some way for us to examine, identify, evaluate s sub n in a way that will be easier for us to figure out what its limit is going to be. Well, one way I can do this is I'm going to multiply s sub n by r. r times s sub n would be r times 1, r times r, r times r squared, r times r to the third. And you'll notice that looks very similar to what we started with. So we get r times s to the n, r plus r squared plus r to the third plus r to the fourth plus r to the n plus r to the n plus 1, multiplying each one of these pieces by r. Now, what we want to do is we want to subtract. If I take this list of numbers, s sub n, and I subtract this list of numbers, r times s sub n, what's left? 1 plus r plus r squared plus r cubed plus r to the fourth plus r to the n minus quantity r plus r squared plus r cubed plus r to the fourth plus r to the n plus r to the n plus 1. You'll notice the r's would cancel, the r squareds would cancel, the r cubes, the r to the fourths, even the r to the n's. The only things that's left are the things in the n's, the 1 and the r to the n plus 1. So as we look at that, s sub n minus r times s sub n written this way, seeing everything cancels, 1 does not subtract out, and the r to the n plus 1 still subtracts out. So what will that give us? Factoring out the s sub n on the left, s sub n times 1 minus r. On the right, all that's left is 1 minus r to the n plus 1. Again, s sub n minus r times s sub n. We'll notice there's an s sub n factor common to both. Dividing out s sub n, s sub n times 1 minus r. On the right-hand side, r subtracts r, r squared subtracts r squared, etc. All that's left is 1 minus r to the n plus 1. So recapping, that was our original series, adding things up to infinity. Here is our definition of the partial sums. The series will converge if the limit of partial sums converges. Now, this is the analysis we had done on the previous slide. S sub n times 1 minus r will be 1 minus r to the n plus 1. Solving for S sub n, because we're interested in the limit as n goes to infinity, that will determine whether or not this series converges we get s sub n is 1 minus r to the n plus 1 over 1 minus r. So here's our question. For which values of r does this converge? We want the limit of the partial sums to converge. We have to think about what values of r would give us a limit. Now if r is a large number, 5, 5 to the n plus 1 will get very large. 7 to the n plus 1 will get very large as n gets large. 2 to the n plus 1 will get very large. So the values that will actually converge for us is when r is between negative 1 and positive 1, what might be informally called fractions or proper fractions. 
because a half to a large number, a half to the second is a quarter, a half to the third is an eighth, a half to the fourth is a sixteenth. Those will be values that will enable those things to converge. Same thing with negative numbers. If I have negative two to the seventh power, that's going to get very large, either positive or negative, depending on the sign. So that's not going to converge either. So the limit of partial sums will converge if we get a value of r between negative one and positive one. So in that case, the series will converge. So S sub n, our limit of partial sums. The series, the sum as k goes to infinity of r sub k, converges if S sub n converges. So that sum is the limit of the partial sums. And we've already said that that sum will be 1 minus r to the n plus 1 over 1 minus r, the limit as n goes to infinity. And we said that it will converge if r is a proper fraction, if r is between negative 1 and 1. If that's the case, if we have a number between negative 1 and 1, raising that to a very, very large number will shrink that to 0. So this piece goes to 0. So all I have left on the right-hand side will be 1 over 1 minus r. So here's our fundamental rule for a geometric series. The sum as k goes to infinity of some ratio to the kth power is just going to be 1 over 1 minus r, but only when r is between negative 1 and 1. If r is beyond those values, the geometric series will diverge. So there's our case. We're going to make one small adjustment to this. You'll notice that this geometric series starts at 1. But we're going to generalize this to have a geometric series that starts at any value. So here's our thought. We're going to multiply this first series by a sub 0, a naught. So a naught times 1 is a naught. a naught times r is a naught r. a naught times r squared, a naught r squared, a naught times r cubed a naught r cubed, a naught times r to the fourth, a naught r to the fourth. And you'll see we get our formula for our geometric series, the sum of r to the k times a naught as k goes from 0 to infinity is the first term a naught over 1 minus the common ratio. That's why we want to remember this. And typically I'll go ahead and move the a naught in past the summation sign to say that sum as k goes from 0 to infinity, a naught first term, r to the k, r is our starting ratio as k goes from 0 to infinity is indeed that first term over 1 minus the common ratio. So let's look at an example. We have 3 plus 3 fifths plus 3 twenty fifths plus 3 hundred twenty fifths plus 3 six hundred twenty fifths etc. First term starting term is 3. Common ratio to get from 3 to 3 fifths multiply a fifth. To get from 3 fifths to 3 twenty fifths multiply a fifth. To get from 3 25ths to 3 125ths, multiply a fifth. So first term is 3, common ratio is a fifth. Does it converge? It's a geometric series. It will converge if the common ratio is between negative 1 and 1. 1 fifth is certainly between negative 1 and 1. A naught is 3, 1 minus a fifth. 3 over 4 fifths, and the result is 15 fourths. Now I've got to warn you of a dangerous shortcut that is often taught in pre-calculus courses. I'm going to show you how it can give you the right answer. So if we look at this ex last problem, if we just say s is 3 plus 3 fifths plus 3 twenty fifths, etc. Multiply by the common ratio, then 1 fifth of s, 3 times a fifth is 3 fifths, 3 fifths times a fifth is 3 twenty fifths, 3 uh, twenty fifths times a fifth is 3 hundred twenty fifths, you get the idea. And then if we would subtract these things, s minus a fifth of s would give me 4 fifths s. Subtracting all the stuff on the right would give me 3. <clears throat> so s minus a fifth s, 4 fifths s equals 3, multiplying both sides by 5 fourths. And we guess get s equals 15 fourths. So why is this dangerous? This assumes that s converges. This assumes that the limit of partial sums exists. So if you're not clear on that, that can lead to some ridiculous sorts of conclusions, like this one. If I say s is 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8 plus 16, clearly that's going to infinity. There's no way that's going to stabilize at some limit. 
If I double both sides, then 2s, 2 times 1 is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, 2 times 4 is 8, 2 times 8 is 16. If I would subtract them, s minus 2s on the left side, everything on this side minus everything on this side just gives me 1. Hmm? s minus 2s is 1, negative s is 1, s is negative 1, really. So you're telling me 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8 plus 16 is negative 1. That's why we must pay attention to the partial sums kind of argument, which we did in general, generalizing our formula for the geometric series that converges if the common ratio is between negative 1 and 1. So the partial sums, indeed, is our key issue. Let's take a look at this example. 7 quarters minus 7 twelfths plus 7 thirty-sixths minus 7 hundred and eighths. First term is 7 fourths. To get from here to here, multiplying by negative a third. Here to here, multiplying by negative a third. Here to here, multiplying by negative a third. So the common ratio seems to be negative a third. First term, 7 fourths. Common ratio, negative a third. Negative a third is between negative 1 and 1, so we can use this formula that the sum of the geometric series is the first term over 1 minus the common ratio. First term, 7 fourths. 1 minus the common ratio. 1 minus negative a third. 7 fourths over 1 minus negative a third, 7 fourths over 4 thirds, and we get 21 sixteenths. One last quick example, another geometric series, 1 plus 4 thirds plus 16 ninths plus 64 twenty sevenths plus dot dot dot. First term is 1, common ratio is 4 thirds, 4 thirds more than 1, not between negative 1 and 1. This geometric series will diverge. And if you would look at the partial sums, the limit of the partial sums would also diverge. And that concludes this lesson.